talk about perform certainly a different way to come to the Preakness with a horse that, for you, with a horse that didn't run in the Kentucky Derby. Um, well, uh, yeah, but it's a good opportunity. You know, it's two races around, two turns on the dirt have been been good races. You know, I'm not kidding myself. He's going to have to move move it up a notch, but the way he's trained, he acts like maybe he has. So, you know, we'll see on Saturday. How does a scratch of first mission um, impact the race? From well, it takes him? a little of the speed away, but you know, I mean, in Lexington, he wasn't up on the lead. He was, you know, he, if you remember, he came through on the rail, and uh, but uh, you know, makes it less you got to beat. You know, seven instead of eight. So, you know, the game certainly has changed since you came here with Easy Goer and the, the Preakness winner used to always come out, almost always come out of the, the Derby. And now, I mean, you just have the one horse from the Derby. But. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, it's kind of a kind of a shame, but you know, I'm not sure that that, that won't change one day. Uh, I'm a very traditionalist guy, but I've been kind of maybe rethinking that a little bit that maybe we do need to space it out a little bit more with uh, what's going on right you know what's going on the way the people are sort of training and handling their horses but uh, you know who knows we just have to see as we go along if they did that like say four weeks between each race is there an asterisk that would go on there if someone wins the triple crown because I don't think so no I don't think so I mean you know, I think it, I think it's fine. It's just a, it's just a different way of doing it. You know, you still got to win them. But is there something to be said about the way it's set up now? And how well, I mean, I think it's probably a little bit more difficult, but I still think it's difficult, no matter how they set it up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, if they want to keep it the way it is, that's fine with me. But I have taken a different sort of look at it. And the Triple Crown has always been for horse racing people. The average sports fan follows horse racing during the Triple Crown. Do you think it would be tough for them to sustain the interest of the average sports fan if it's spread out over a couple months? I don't think so. I mean, I think if they put it at the right, you know, the right spots. I mean, what's the matter with the Derby, Memorial Day, Fourth of July? Mm -hmm. You know, it might could be, uh, it might could even be a little bit better in today's time. Mm -hmm. You've come with a truly great horse and easy goer here. Just got beat. You've come with the Derby winner here in Orb. Um, have you changed like what it takes? Well, I think that you, if you look, the pattern is that way. I mean, you know, perform, broke his maiden and ran back in a stake. You know, I mean, in the old days that wouldn't have happened to me. Uh, but, you know, now to get a A other than to go and all that kind of stuff, sometimes you have to be a little bit more aggressive in your thinking than, uh, you know, you did, you know, they don't really give you as much chance to develop a horse along the way uh, as they used to. So you, you you need a good horse to win, but you think you don't necessarily need a great horse. And even with a great horse, it can be awful tough. So. Yeah, no, I agree. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, a great horse in this race with only seven horses in it, you know, is going to make, would make a huge difference. But uh you know, maybe Mage is that way. You know, maybe Perform's going to be that horse. But um, uh, <clears throat> it's just a different ball game in different times. And, you know, a lot of these guys have got a lot of horses and they got to keep them split up. And so, you know, a lot of times, you know, they got a horse for an A other than, but they got three others too. So then they're having to run them in a stake here and there. Here and there. And, but that's just sort of the attitude anymore. And, uh, you know, it's. It's sure a lot different than when I was what I was brought up, but I think in the last few years I've learned to adapt a little bit too. Going back a ways, a horse like uh, real quiet, uh, you forget how many times it took him to break his maiden. He went on to be a two-time champion. Could perform be that? Uh, we type sure of like horse to think that way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's made a lot of improvement in his last two races. You know how much there is there. He's trained really good since the Tezio. He's trained really good down here. Uh, you know, we'll just have to wait and see how, if he, if he can step it up or not. And finally, what do you make of Mage? You would have seen him on I the like Mage. There. I like Mage. I thought Mage ran, ran a heck of a race in the uh, Florida Derby. He was kind of my pick in the Kentucky Derby, and a lot of my friends said, well, he ain't got enough experience, but he had enough experience. I thought he ran a really good race in the Florida Derby and a really good race in uh, the Kentucky Derby. And... Um, you know, I mean, he, we ran him against him in a maiden race, only got to be four or five lengths, so going short. So, 